If you like retro gaming and vintage computers, and you get all fizzy at a cheeky glimpse of circuit board, then this is the video for you. Rather. I always liked a bit of electronics, all the colourful resistors, capacitators and transistifiers, but there's something particularly alluring about a bare naked circuit board that makes me feel all weak at the knees and light headed in my tum tum. So here we have a Pi powered Spectrum emulator, complete with its own display, and I love it because this is art. Bear with me here. I have a real Spectrum, and I can run Spectrum emulators on Tinternet, and I have big modern displays and I have proper box keyboards, so there's really no need for this but it functions and more importantly, it's interesting to look at. It's a geek sculpture, if you will. <laughs> Terribly funny. Oh yes, that's very witty. I love the bare switch keyboard on the circuit board. The functions of each key are painted on and it all works, probably better than an original Spectrum with a rubber keyboard. It has a screen, the keyboard and built-in software, so pretty much self-contained. You could probably add a portable power source if you wanted to. But some might say that they want to actually use it rather than just admire it. For regular use, you'll want to attach a big screen and a gamepad, which you can do. There are a few gotchas though. For the joystick, I found that the Atari style joystick port didn't seem to work too well, and it was better to use a basic USB controller like my Retro Games one. That seemed to emulate a Kempston joystick okay. For the screen, there's a VGA output, but there are a few things you should consider. Your TV or monitor may well not have a VGA input these days. So I had to use my trusty open source scan converter. Also you need to tell the board that you want to use the VGA output by holding fire or select and pressing reset, otherwise you'll just get a blank screen. You can also attach a keyboard on the USB port and it works, although using a PC keyboard to type into the wacky Sinclair command interface is a bit weird. Holding Alt GR on a PC keyboard is the equivalent of symbol so that gets you inverted commas on a P key. Shift and Alt GR gets you to the E cursor mode, which will get you tab on the P key. Once in E mode, holding Alt GR gets you extra stuff like the copyright symbol on the P key. So let's try writing a basic, basic program using a PC keyboard. I've sped this up in the edit so it's not too boring and taken the opportunity for some self-promotion. Please like and subscribe! The quickest way to start playing games is using these buttons to the right of the screen. They cycle through some preloaded snapshot images on the micro SD card. There are quite a few to choose from, I counted about 50, and they load instantly, which is nice. You can hear that there's a very satisfying click to the keyboard switches. In fact the whole thing feels really solid, probably because somebody else built it for me. I recorded the sound using a mini microphone from the onboard speaker, so the quality is as you'd hear it live. This is Starquake by Bubble Bus, a game I really like for its high contrast and colourful cartoon graphics, and the various movement options, and the exploration element. Saberwolf is a bit of a classic. The jungle graphics made a change from the more common space-based themes of the day. It was done just before Ultimate went into their isometric 3D period with games like Alien 8. That means it's easy to control and still has the beautifully crafted graphics that Ultimate was so skilled at. I remember playing this game for hours back in the day. Robocop isn't really my thing, but it does show a good attempt at side-scrolling street shoot 'em beat 'em up. Side-scrolling isn't something the Spectrum was particularly suited to. And even though the main graphics are only black and white, they look really good. For the 1980s anyway.
Robin of the Wood by Odin Computer Graphics is an interesting game. It's not unlike Saber Wolf in some ways, but it's the sampled sound that makes it stand out. This wasn't common at the time. I suspect they're one bit samples because it's quite difficult to make out the speech, especially through a tiny speaker. If you've seen any of my other videos, and if not you should because they're awesome, you'll know that Elite often pops up. The Spectrum isn't suited to vector graphics. The program has managed it, but the frame rate is low. By pressing F1 or Menu we can go to the ZX Pico main menu, where we find some interesting options including CPU speed. Now things are running a lot smoother, and the ship is much more responsive. Like a lot of systems at the time, the Spectrum's graphics were very much character based. So to do line graphics, the developers needed to create a pseudo bitmap screen based on a grid of characters being constantly redefined. Not a trivial process. If we go back to that main menu, we can see all the snapshot images as an alphabetically sorted list. There are options to edit these files, but it's probably easier to do that by taking the micro SD card to a PC, if you really want to. This is probably an easier way to choose a game than the shortcut buttons on the keyboard. Eidolon by Activision is a cavern exploration game with some nice texture effects. For the 1980s, that is. But, like Elite, the frame rate is low. I mean, painfully low. If we do the same trick of going into the main menu and changing CPU speed to unmoderated, it comes alive. It's not just the frame rate, it's also the general responsiveness. Now you get a real feel for your surroundings. But there's more than just the 50 snapshots. We've also got hundreds of tape images we can load from the tape player feature. They're sorted into folders, with each folder containing a couple of pages of titles, although many seem to be variations of one game. Who knows what you might find? I say. Once you've selected a tape image, you need to get back to the spectrum to load it, and just like the real thing, it'll take some time. So I've shortened the process a bit in the edit, so you can experience but not endure this part. This is Jetpack, one of my favourite 8-bit games. It's a classic, simple but effective arcade-style game. I think it's a bit of a masterpiece. So why did I buy a Fruit Bat ZX Pico? Because I wanted to. I saw a picture of it and I just wanted it. End of. I could start loading more games onto the SD card or maybe even try loading different emulators. I could put it in a custom case or solder stuff onto it. But honestly, I think I'll just get it out occasionally and play with it. 